Leo Brody here again. I'm making these videos about my experience learning to mix music in Dolby Atmos in Nuendo. It's very hard to find practical information, so as I learn things, I'm sharing them with you. The topic for today's video is Surround Reverb. I recently purchased a copy of Cinematic Rooms by Liquid Sonics, and it's a great reverb that supports surround, and it works with Dolby Atmos. I'm not doing a walkthrough of the features of the plugin. I'm just focusing on the routing, especially for Nuendo. So it's actually pretty straightforward to add Cinematic Rooms to your Nuendo Atmos project, but I had a couple little gotchas that I had to figure out. Uh, so here I have a project where I've already done it. I can just show it to you. The main thing is I've got a group called Surround Verb. It's a 7.1.2 group and I've got Cinematic Rooms as an insert. Now the catch is uh, I'm going to use this as a bed in Atmos and there's two requirements for adding a bed. One is it has to be a group which means this, this cannot be an effect channel. That threw me off. Also it has to, it can't be a bigger ch a channel size than 7.1.2 and that threw me off as well because Cinematic Rooms is actually capable of outputting 7.1.4 and even 7.1.6 so we just have to remember to make a group in 7.1.2 then of course we add that as a bed in the authoring tool and then finally we go to our sends and we take our sacks and we add a little send that's probably a lot actually um, but just so we can hear it um, we're sending the sax group and this is a this sax channel is a stereo mix down of two sax two saxes and I'm playing a duet um, on either side of the stereo field and so that is going in also as, a, as an object into our Atmos. But in addition, I'm sending the signal into our surround bed. So I'm going to solo this channel so that I can play the track or this little section that I have on repeat where the saxes come in. So you can hear a little reverb on the tail. And let's go look at the uh, plug-in for a second. The main thing I want to show you is that we have the signal coming in on the front here. And this plug-in is producing reverberation channels on what they call these different planes. Front, center, side, rear, and elevation. So these are all going to different speakers and this creates a really lush sensation that you're in a space where the saxophones are reverberating all over the room. Now I just want to point out something for the entire video. Whenever I'm playing a section of the project like this, an Atmos project, it's in playing in surround, you're only hearing what's coming over my 5.1.4 speaker setup into my vocal mic. And that's because there's really no way I can capture it. I don't have the bar binaural thing set up. So I'm only trying to show you the routing. You can't really hear exactly the surround. You just can hear it playing. Now this actually sounds really good, but the purist in me is not too happy that we're only getting two height channels. We're getting left and right, but not front and back. So I'm going to show you a way that we can get the full surround effect from Cinematic Rooms into Dolby Atmos. And we're going to do that by dividing a 7.1.4 surround mix into three parts, one being uh, seven channels at head level, and then a stereo object for the front top, and another stereo object for the rear top. And then we'll put them all together in Atmos. So let's take a look. This time I'm going to put Cinematic Rooms as an insert on a 7.1.4 channel, not a 7.1.2. And that way this one instance of the plugin will be the source of the three groups or the parts of the surround reverb signal that we're routing differently, but it'll all be generated by this one plugin. So let's start with the seven channels at head level. So here I've got a 7.1 group called head level verb. And this I'm going to use as a bed going into Dolby Atmos with just the seven head level channels on it. Now 
if I were to just send our full surround mix into this channel, because these channels are a different configuration, because we're going from 7.1.4 to 7.1, Cubase would try to do the right thing, and it would fold down the height channels into the lower channels, which is not what we want. We want to get rid of the height channels for this bed. So we have to use an intermediary channel, which is also a 7.1.4, like this one, so that there won't be any fold down from here to here. Then on this channel, we can use this very convenient plugin called Mixer Delay. And you can see we're muting the four height channels here. So now we have on this channel, everything except the height channels, and then we're routing that into the head level verb so that we can take that and make it a bed that we import into Dolby Atmos. Now we're doing a similar kind of thing with these two channels, and I'm going to use them as objects that I import into Dolby Atmos. But we have a similar situation. We have to go through intermediary channels in order to do the routing. So these are 7.1.4 channels so that when we send from, from this channel into these guys, we're getting the full signal, but then we can do the routing in each of these channels. So this one, top front only, you can see all the channels are being uh, muted because they're being routed nowhere, but the top front left and top front right channels are being routed to the left and right channels. And so that way, when we send this channel into this one, we're only going to get the top front left channels routed to the left and right of this stereo group here. And we're doing the same thing with the top right, I know this is complicated, but we're taking, we're muting everything except for the top rear left and top rear right. They're being routed to the left and right so that when we send this signal into this stereo group, we're only getting the left and right top uh, rear. So then we add them all up in, into the uh, renderer by importing the, the bed and the two objects. And you can see that um, the top front verb is being uh, panned to the top front, and the top rear object is gonna be panned to the top rear. So now we have, between the, the bed and the two objects, we have a full 7.1 surround reverb, and I like to call it virtual 7.1.4 because it's actually taking three different paths to add up to 7.1.4 inside Dolby Atmos. Please give that a try and let me know what you think. To be honest, if I were mixing in binaural headphones instead of on a full speaker array with four high channels, I probably wouldn't have even thought about it. So I'd really love to hear your thoughts. Now there's one other consideration and that is the position of the sound source and how that affects the reverberation in the room. Now, I have to admit that I had a naive expectation about what cinematic rooms would do and how it would work based on my experience with stereo reverb. So, since I was a little hazy about this, I'd like to go back to the basics. The simplest reverb would be mono, with a mono input and a mono output. You can picture it in terms of an old-fashioned echo chamber, where there would be one speaker and one microphone. A mono to stereo reverb has a mono input and a stereo output. The output captures the stereo image of the space. But because the source is mono, the reverb always sounds as if the source is in the center of the room. A true stereo reverb has stereo input and stereo output. The stereo image of the reflections and reverberation changes depending on the position of the sound source in the input stereo image. We can demonstrate this with cinematic rooms. This is a stereo project, and we have cinematic rooms as an insert on a stereo effect channel. And of course, that means the plugin is working in stereo mode. I have a mono snare that's routed into a stereo drum bus, and the drum bus has a send into the effect channel. Both the effect channel and the drum bus are routed into the stereo out. So when I play the track, and pan the snare, it changes the apparent position on the drum bus. And since the drum bus is being sent as a true stereo into the verb, 
panning also affects the position of the reverb of the snare. So if I click the listen button, we can hear only the reverb without the dry signal. So we can hear that the reverb is affected by the stereo image of the drum bus, giving the illusion that the snare is actually in the room. The point is that I somehow imagined that cinematic rooms would respond like the surround equivalent of true stereo. But I quickly realized that that's not possible. For one thing, the plugin has no way of knowing what I'm doing in the Atmos panner. So let's look at what it actually does and how we can actually use it. So as we saw before, when we play the track, we see our signal coming in on the front plane only, but it's being output on all the planes at approximately equal amounts, although you can see they're slightly different. And this is because the plugin is in the default configuration of full surround crossfeed propagation. In this mode, audio comes in on each channel and it creates its own reverb and it also creates reverb on every other channel. Where it says all crossfeed reverb is decorrelated, that means that every time the reverb is calculated on a different channel, it's changed enough so that it doesn't cause phase problems when the track is folded down. I think of this as the sound source being in the exact center of the reverberation room, and it's immovable. It actually sounds really great. But I wanted to see if I could come up with something more like a true surround reverb. And I came up with two ways to do this. I actually like the second one better, but I'm going to show you the first one too, because it uses some features that I think you might find useful. For this next approach, we're going to use an alternative to full surround cross-propagation. It's called True Stereo Left-Right Propagation. In this mode, the plugin produces true stereo reverb on each plane individually, but each plane is treated separately with no cross-propagation across planes. I'm going to set that option right now. I've got two 7.1.4 groups. They're both routing into the surround verb channel. All right. Now, the difference between them is that this one is just a pass-through. This one, however, has routing so that what comes in on the left and right channels, because we're going to get a stereo send, that's going to get routed to the left and right surround channels, which are the ones in back. So we're basically using this as a send to the back. So now, if we play our track, and we switch over to our sends, we can see that we can bring in the front verb, and we can get a little signal going to the front plane. We can maybe lower that, and then bring up the verb to the rear plane. So we can choose where we want to position the sound front to back. We could add more planes if we wanted to go to the trouble of doing that, but we'll notice that because uh, we're in this mode, there's no cross propagation to these other channels that we're not actually specifically sending to. That's the first approach, but I like this next one better. It's the best of both worlds where we combine the full crossover propagation with reverb that's more local to where the sound source actually is. Let me show you how it works. So we're going to go back to our saxes channel, our stereo group, uh, and demonstrate this there. To begin with, I have everything, all, all the reverb turned off for that channel, so it's dry. That's what it sounds like. Now this send is going into the verb 7.1.4, which is the full crossover propagation. So if I turn that up, you can really hear that reverb and it's coming from all the speakers, basically. So now I'm gonna turn that off for a moment and go to the other way to do it, which is the more localized reverb. We're gonna get that by having cinematic rooms on there. So I'm gonna enable that. And you can see now, the interface looks a little different because it's in stereo mode so it's showing the individual channels but what we want to do is control the the dry wet mix if we turn that way up we're going to get too much reverb but if we turn it back we're going to get mostly the dry signal with a little bit of reverb on it so we can dial those thi those things together the local reverb here 
and the more scattered or um, general room crossover reverb by adjusting those two settings. Another way to approach this is to have not one but two channels for each instrument, one for the dry signal and one for the reverb. So in this case we have saxes, which is the channel we had before, but now we've added sax verb, which has cinematic rooms on it in stereo, and we're doing our send here. I actually have it at zero, and we can control the amount uh, of reverb that we want with the fader, like that. Both of those channels are introduced into Atmos as stereo objects. This over here is the dry signal, and you can see we have it panned sort of toward the front, somewhat high, and the panning is exactly the same for the reverb on this side, but the difference is that we can make the object size as big as we want to for the reverb, and that way we'll have the saxes kind of at pinpoint locations more, and the reverb will kind of take up a lot of space in the area. So that's a cool thing to try too. So as you can see, there's a lot of possibilities here. I'm going to keep working on my Atmos mixing project, and as I do, I'm going to keep experimenting. Full disclosure, I have no idea what the best way to do this is. I'm just experimenting and trying things, and I'm sharing with you what I'm figuring out. Please let me know what works for you, and we can learn from each other. If you want more topics like this, please like and subscribe. Next time.